Hi everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Chasers, December 22nd. Just thought I'd give a quick update. I'd like to explain a little bit on why forecasting snow is so difficult in the Pacific Northwest. But before I get to that, I'd just like to show you the big ridge building out of the Pacific Ocean here. You can see the initial cold air coming off of British Columbia. It's gonna get much colder than this. This is just the initial stage. You can see the frontal system moving over Western Washington and Oregon this evening. There's some lightning strikes associated with that up and down the Oregon and Washington coast and actually moving inland towards Olympia. If you take a look up over the Northwest Territories and the Yukon, you can see this light blue. It doesn't seem to be moving. That's a very cold surface there, probably due to snowpack and ice. You see it matches the top of some of these infrared clouds here, and that's just showing just how cold it is. And this ridge is just letting this air stream over Western Canada down into the Pacific Northwest here in the next few days. So before we get into the snow forecast, I'd just like to show this line of thunderstorms that moved through tonight, Southwest Washington. Quite a bit of lightning associated with it, and there's still lightning going on as it approached Shelton and Olympia. That's probably gonna move into the Puget Sound here tonight and cause some moderate heavy rainfall, maybe a slight chance for a lightning strike. And that lightning was going on also west of Portland there too, and I looked earlier. But let's dive right into the forecast, especially for Christmas night. It gets kind of interesting. Um, the GFS cools Seattle down, for example, a little bit later than the European does. So between 10 p.m. on Christmas night into the day after Christmas morning, the GFS drops Seattle pretty rapidly and all the way down through Olympia below freezing. And you can still see here that precipitation is still going on. So that's probably going to get tricky for Sunday morning there. Um, some accumulation on the roads possible. You'll notice it hasn't quite cooled off the Willamette Valley, Portland South yet at this point, And it doesn't do so until the next morning, actually. But then it keeps us all below freezing for at least a week after that. And you can see Arctic air well established over the region on the GFS. The European is a little bit different here. This is Christmas night, and you can see this is 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you can see Seattle goes from about 35 to 30. So, and there's still precipitation in the region at this time. So the European has it starting to stick on Christmas evening and night. So that'll be something to watch and see who wins that battle. Now I wanted to go on and show why some of these forecasts are so difficult and why um, you're probably hearing about some potential for snow in the days after Christmas and some models being uh, drier and I'll show you why that is here a little bit. So this is the European model. The one on the right here was this morning's run, the 12Z. This is the 18Z and you can see quite a bit of a difference in this storm system here. A deeper low, more precipitation on the newest European run. And the first one, the one this morning had an open wave here and just not a very dynamic system. The snowfall mainly Portland, Portland South. And the one this afternoon, you can see the snowfall extending further up towards Olympia. And the reasons for that are why the, dif the forecast is so difficult. You'll see here that the only difference really is just this slight kink, this little bit more of cold air aloft and this wind pattern just kinked out enough over the water to develop this low pressure system. And it just didn't quite get out enough here on the morning run. So that's the difference between a bigger snowstorm and just very light snow. That's why these forecasts are so difficult, especially when Arctic air is in place. And if we go into the future a little bit more here, you see that system, pretty dynamic low diving into Southern Oregon at this time, would bring a pretty decent snowfall through some of the Willamette Valley in this scenario. So we'll have to watch for that. Um, let's look at another vantage that we'll zoom out a little bit wider and you can see kind of the reflection of the polar vortex here. As you can see, it looks a little bit different and some different um, sections of it going on here, I should say. And as I go into the future here a little bit, you'll notice the kink on the afternoon European run and that's what's going to develop that low that dies into Oregon. Now it's been going back and forth with that. So right now we don't know what's going to happen on the 27th with that system. Do these winds come out enough? Does the cold air come off the coastline enough to develop the slow or doesn't it? Both the GFS and the Euro are waffling back and forth with this low pressure system. And so the confidence is very low on the days after Christmas. If we look at the GFS here too, 
GFS did the opposite, the 18Z run versus the brand new run that just came off the presses. You'll notice the earlier run had the winds and the colder air aloft get a little bit further out over the water. You'll notice that little lobe there of colder air come out closer to Vancouver Island versus this evening's run. So the low is weaker um, on this evening's run and much more dynamic storm on the afternoon's run there. And going into the future there, you can see it much a much weaker low on this version of the GFS here. But yeah, this is why it gets so difficult. I mean, you can look at this and you can see in just six hours the differences between the reflection of the polar vortex here. And if one of these lobes swings out over the water on the way down into our region, a low is going to develop. And the more that does, the more the low will spin up and the further the snow extent will go north into western Washington. So this is what we're watching and really hard to predict these things in advance. So right now we're just kind of working on Christmas and Christmas night and the day after. And then the troughing that's going on in any residual bands when we're below freezing after. It, it's nice to look at these systems, but these forecasts are going to change in the days coming after Christmas. So. I just wanted to do a little video on that. Hope you guys are liking these videos. Make sure to click like and subscribe and check back on Twitter. I'll do another update or two tonight before I go to bed on Twitter. And I will probably do a live stream tomorrow. So I'll put out on Twitter the time that I will do that. Otherwise, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.